there are a few basic operations and concepts that pervade all form field scripting in Acrobat JavaScript. You will see and use these in every script that has to do with form fields. In Acrobat JavaScript, each individual form field is represented by its own form field object. The form field object contains properties and functions that we can use to analyze and control the form field. So, to use a form field in a script, we have to first acquire its associated form field object. To do this, we use the getField function. But, before getting into the details of this, let's take one step back in our perspective. Form fields are elements on a PDF document, and the PDF document also has an associated object. As discussed in an earlier video, this is a pattern in any JavaScript environment. Every element of interest has an associated object that provides us with properties and functions to analyze and control that element. This slide is divided into two sections. The left-hand side represents the Acrobat viewer, and inside the viewer we see PDF documents, and on those documents are PDF elements like form fields. The right-hand side represents the JavaScript perspective, the view from the scripting world. Since form fields are inside of a PDF document, from the JavaScript perspective, form field objects are inside of the document object. And that's where we always start, with the document object. In Acrobat JavaScript, in almost all situations, we use the this keyword to get the document object. This isn't always true. In core JavaScript, the this keyword represents the current object, and of course there are situations where the current object is not the document. But for the vast majority of scripting situations, within the Acrobat JavaScript environment, the this keyword is the document object. Let's examine this a bit more closely. For scripts that are inside of a document, the keyword this always refers to that document, the document the script is inside of, even if that document is not the document currently visible to the user. So it's not the user's current document, but it is the script's current document. In scripts that are outside of the document, like scripts that run from the console window, or within automation scripts that run from a toolbar button or from a menu item, the this keyword refers to the PDF document that is currently being viewed by the user. So we have two situations, scripts inside the PDF and scripts outside the PDF, where the this keyword has a slightly different application, but it means the same thing. And of course, there are other ways to get a document object. Various functions like the one for opening a PDF returns the document object. But these are much more advanced topics and won't be discussed in this video series. For our purposes here, we can think of the this keyword as being the document object. Everything about the PDF is accessed through the document object. Now, back to fields. We acquire the field object from the getField function, which is a member of the document object. You'll see and use this syntax over and over this.getField, where this is a pointer to the document object, and getField is the document object function for acquiring the field object. The getField function has a single input, which is the name of the form field. To acquire a form field object, we have to know the name of the field. This is one reason why it's important to have a good naming convention for your fields, so that you can remember the names and make sense out of them when you see the code at a later time. Once we have the field object, we can analyze and manipulate it. We'll get into that in just a little bit. There is other information about fields that we can get from the document object. For example, we can find out how many fields there are on a document from the numFields property. Let's try it out in the console window. I'll just paste in the code from the slide and press Control Enter to execute the code. It returns three. So there are three fields on this document. You haven't seen them yet because they're on other pages. And this is an important point that will be covered again in more detail later on. Fields belong to the entire document, not to a particular page. 
you'll notice that the getField function doesn't take a page input. There is no function we can use to say, get all the fields on page 1. When we get fields, we get fields for the entire document. In Acrobat, fields are an abstract concept. What you see on the page are the field appearances, or what we call widgets. We'll talk about this more later on. We can find out the names of the fields on the document using this function. The getNthFieldName function is very useful for doing more generic operations, where we want to search through all the fields on a document to pick and choose the fields we want to work with. Like, for example, some fancy calculation, or to find out which fields widgets are on a particular page. We can search through all the fields on the document and find out which fields are on which page. But mostly, this function is used in automation scripts, where we don't have any previous knowledge of what the field names are on a particular document. Automation won't be covered here, and for the most part, we don't use this function in document scripts. Once we have the field object, there's all kinds of stuff we can do with it. Probably, the most useful, of course, is getting and setting field values. The field's value is accessed through the value property of the field object. On the bottom of this page, there is a text field, a checkbox, and a group of radio buttons. Even though these are very different kinds of fields, in JavaScript, getting and setting field values is exactly the same for all of them. Let's do some examples. I'll bring up the JavaScript console again, but this time I'll move it so that we can see all of the fields on the page and work with the code to manipulate them at the same time. First, I'll enter some text into the text field. Then, in the console window, I'll type in this.getField and acquire the text field. I set up the name of this field to be my text when I created the document. Its value is accessed, like I said previously, through the value property. I'll just hit Control Enter, and it returns Hello World, which is exactly what we would expect. Next, I'll change its value from this line of JavaScript code by assigning a new string to it. When I hit Control Enter, Notice that the text in the text field changes instantaneously. Now let's clean up the workspace, and I'll repeat the same process for the checkbox, which is named My Check. Right now the checkbox is turned off, so when I run this code, it returns the off value, which just happens to be the word off. This is the same value all checkboxes will have for the off value. Let's click on the checkbox to turn it on, and now the value returns yes. This is the default on value for all checkboxes, but unlike the off value, this can be changed from the options tab in the checkbox's properties dialog. And again, I can manipulate the value of the checkbox by assigning it a value in JavaScript. Let's just turn it off. When I execute the line of code, you'll see that the checkbox turns off. If I assign it the value of yes, the checkbox turns on. Let's try this process again with the radio buttons. Acrobat treats a group of radio buttons as a single field. I've called this group of radio buttons my choice. and the current value of my choice is off because none of the radio buttons are turned on. If I select option 2 and execute this line of code again, it returns opt2. This is a string that I assigned as the on value for this particular radio button. Different radio buttons in the group have different values. Just like in the other cases, I can manipulate the value of the radio button group by assigning it a value in JavaScript. I'll assign it the value of opt3, which will turn on the third radio button. If I assign the value of 
off to the radio button group, all of the radio buttons turn off. That's how we use JavaScript to set and get field values. But of course, there is much, much more to a form field than just its value. Each field object has a set of properties that control how it looks and how it behaves. In fact, nearly every property on the field's property dialog can be controlled with a script. On the bottom of this line, you'll see that I've added some form fields. In fact, the input field and the checkbox field that you see are exactly the same field that were on the previous slide. They're just different instances of those fields. And that's why they're showing the same values. Let's take a look at some of the properties that are set for these fields. I'll select the Select Object tool and double click on the text field, which displays the text field's properties dialog. As discussed in the previous video, the values on the General and the Appearance tabs are common to all form fields. For example, the form field visibility property and the read only property. But of course, each field type also has its own unique set of properties associated with that type. And these are shown on the Options tab. For example, a text field can be single or multi line, but this particular property makes no sense for a checkbox. As we can see here, this particular text box is set for non multi line or single line operation. Let's close the properties dialog and do an example. I'll bring up the JavaScript console window. We'll clean it up a bit and set the get field operation to get the text field object. But instead of setting and getting the value, we'll look at the multi line operation. When I execute this line of code, it returns false, which is exactly what we saw in the properties window but now I'll set it to true. Let's close the console window and go back and take a look at the properties dialog. On the options tab we can see the multi-line checkbox is set to true. Most of the options that are available on the properties dialog we can also get and set through JavaScript. Let's go back to the JavaScript console window Let's try getting the multi line property from the checkbox, which is named my check. JavaScript threw an exception. It says invalid get error. Get not possible. Invalid or unknown. This response is pretty severe, but it does tell us that the multi line property is completely invalid for the checkbox. The multi line property is unique for text field and does not apply to any other field type. Each of the field types have properties that are like this. They are unique only for their own field type. Let's look at a property that's common for all form field types. The fill color. The checkbox has a red fill or background color. When I run this line of code, it returns a color array. I'm not going to get into the color formats here. Just suffice it to say that this represents the color red. To change it to green, we assign it a new value. For this, I'll use a predefined value in the color object. When I execute the code, you can see that the background color of the checkbox changes immediately. Let's do one more example, showing and hiding fields. The field's visibility is controlled through two different properties the hidden property and the display property. Both of these properties do exactly the same thing. When fields were first added to Acrobat in version 3, they created the hidden property for showing and hiding the fields. But by the time Acrobat 4 rolled around, they'd rethought this property and decided that it should be called display instead of hidden. So they created the display property and told us scripters, hey, don't use that hidden property, use the display property. But of course, everybody was already using the hidden property and they've never been able to get rid of it since. Which doesn't mean that one day we'll all wake up and hidden won't exist anymore. It could happen. 
This is a pattern you'll see repeated with many of the properties and functions in Acrobat JavaScript. Before using a property, always be sure to check it out in the Acrobat JavaScript reference first. The reference will say whether or not this property has been deprecated, which is just a fancy way of saying that they don't want you to use it anymore, not that it's not there. So let's give it a try. For the demonstration, I'll use the hidden property. Currently, it's set to false, which makes sense because we can see the checkbox. But if I set it to true, the checkbox immediately disappears. I set it back to false, and the checkbox appears. That's how you hide and show fields in Acrobat JavaScript. More of the field properties will be covered in the following videos on using the specific form field types. But the definitive reference is always the Acrobat JavaScript reference. If you see a property in the fields property dialog that you want to use, look it up in the Acrobat JavaScript reference to see if it's available for scripting and how it's used.